Hey traders, let me show you everything you need to know about for loops in PineScript in two minutes and 45 seconds. For loop structure looks like this. You first need to use the for keyword operator, obviously, and then we need to declare a counter variable. You can call this anything and it's only accessible within the scope of this for loop. The next thing to do is assign this counter an initial value. So we'll start with zero. Then we need to tell PineScript what to count up to. So for this example, let's just put in 10. This could also be a negative number to count backwards. So for example, we could count from 10 to zero and now this for loop would count backwards but i'll leave it as that for now the next optional feature of a for loop is that we can tell pine what increment to loop by so for example if i put two in there this for loop would now skip every odd number but i'll leave that out for now and we'll just count by increments of one now for this example let's count how many green bars were plotted over this look back period to do that we can use our counter as our historical operator so if the close of the current loop is greater than the open of the current loop, we have a bullish bar. We can create a new variable here called green candles equals zero and increment that variable by one whenever this condition is met. Now, if I paste this into our plot, save my script, we should be counting how many green bars there were across the past 11 bars. We could also turn these numbers into user inputs. So I could say look back equals input dot integer 10, paste that in there, and this will do exactly the same thing. So that is a for loop in a nutshell. Let me show you two other features we have to work with when using for loops. One way we could achieve this same outcome is by using a continue clause. And now we'll be counting red candles because every time a bullish candle is detected in our for loop, the for loop will skip this loop and move on to the next loop. So if this condition is not met and we do not continue, then we will increment our red candles counter by one. So if I save our script, we should be getting a different counter up here now. And there we go. Now, one last operator, keyword operator we have to work with is the break operator. And what this does is break out of our for loop whenever this condition is met. So essentially what this will now do if I save my script is it will count how many red bars plotted onto my chart in a row. And then whenever a green bar is detected, our loop will exit. So now when I save my code, we are now counting how many consecutive red bars plotted onto our chart in a row until a green bar is detected. Now, one last thing I want to bring to your attention is that we can also use a for loop to return a value much like a custom function. So if I change this to say loop count is assigned our for loop and I get rid of all this code and I just put in our counter variable here. If we plot this loop count variable onto the chart, we should be getting 10 because our for loop is counting up to 10 and then returning that counter variable. And then we're assigning this variable to whatever this for loop outputs. So now when I save my code, we should be getting 10 drawing. There we go. And that is one of the way we can use a for loop to return a value. And that's about all you need to know about for loops. Good luck with your trading and coding. If you want to learn more, check out my website. The link is in the video description. Take care.